A lot of us in the know will remember that it wasn't taken particularly well when Analog sent a surprise email to everyone saying these were available to order. This included people in different countries who wouldn't have a chance to see it in the early hours of morning, myself included. That pain aside, as you can see I did eventually get a brand new set and I didn't have to pay a premium as I got it from a pretty cool eBay seller. These are of course the cartridge adapters for the Analog Mega SG which allow software from other cartridge based Sega systems to be played on it. We'll take a quick look at them and then test them out on the Mega SG itself. The texture of this box is really nice, I don't quite know how to explain it, just take my word for it. The lid sort of just lifts off, but that's easier said than done. I was hoping this would be a bit smoother. Whoa, sneaking in some production quality with these shots, how long will that last? Anyway, as you can see, the quality of these adapters is quite high and you can tell that just by looking at them and the way they're packaged. They're also made by Analog, who seem to take quality very seriously in my experience. Using them is pretty straightforward. They just plug straight into the system and your software goes into the top of that. Going from the original early 90s Game Gear LCD to this is a huge leap. The image is flawless and the sound is nice and sharp. Also, because it's the Mega SG, we have some fun resolution options and a bunch of other options that I've previously covered in the Mega SG review. Well, that's the Game Gear adapter, and I'm glad my Mega SG isn't bricked. What do you mean, bricked? I hear you ask. Well, by looking here, we can see that this set is version 1.1. Some unfortunate souls out there got the 1.0 versions, and the Game Gear adapter from that run had the potential to render your Mega SG useless. That's right, dead. Analog were very quick to fix this issue, and they have since sent everyone a free 1.1 Game Gear adapter. So that's that. The SG-1000 slash Mark III adapter is... well, it's exactly that. But this is actually the adapter I was looking forward to the most. Because I actually have a small collection of those games, and oh boy, do they look amazing on the Mega SG. The only other way I can play these games with a clean image without composite or RF is with my French Yino SE3000H, but this is much more convenient than that. Unless I actually want to use software designed for the SE3000. I don't really need to point this out, but the Mega SG doesn't have a keyboard. You can't use it with the SK1100 either, so my basic level 3 software is useless. But even if you do get a keyboard working with it, you still can't use that software anyway because those cartridges were only compatible with SC3000s and weren't functional SG1000s, instead you just get BEEP BEEP! And since the FPGA call for these cartridges is an SG1000 one and not an SC3000 one, they just won't work. Music for the SC3000 won't work either. I even tested the SF7000, which is an amazingly cool piece of Sega history, and that won't work with it either. And I promise it's not broken. I don't quite know how it works, but come on, I want to see the Mega SG make these discs spin. Oh yeah, the games sound great here too, with how well the Mega SG replicates the audio. The Sega My Card adapter is cool to look at. I don't have any My Card games, but I bet I would just praise all the same praises again. Well, there we go. That was that. 
There are plenty of Mega SG review videos out there, but at the time I'm writing this, I'm not too aware of any reviews of these adapters, even all this time later. So I thought I'd jump in and be that guy. I hope it was worth it, and that it was enjoyable to some capacity. But for now, and as always, I'll be back in 16 bits.